Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, Main Lube Lubricants, and your local Repco store. G'day, I'm Fletch, and this is Classic Restos. It's the classic car show that showcases vehicles from yesteryear. These are the lucky ones. These vehicles have survived. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Australia's most favourite classic car show, Classic Restos. G'day and welcome to the TV show that revs up lounge rooms in four countries, Classic Restos. In fact, Classic Restos is into its seventh year. It's a big thanks to you at home and, of course, to my major sponsors, Shannon's Insurance, Main Lube Lubricants and Repco stores around Australia and New Zealand. In fact, when it comes time to classic vehicle and home insurance, Shannon's Insurance is the best in the business. Shannon's offer home and contents insurance plus $10,000 worth of enthusiasts cover included. That covers you against loss or damage to automotive memorabilia and collectibles, automotive spare parts and accessories, tools, instruments and equipment kept at your home plus so much more. Only a company of enthusiasts would think of cover like that. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call 134646. You can also visit Shannon's online at shannons.com .au. And another great company is Main Lube Lubricants. You know what? You can send them away an oil sample in an 80 mil container such as this and you will then receive a report. Your oil sample from your engine, transmission, gearbox or diff will be subject to a strict laboratory process to prove what component is being subjected to where. No matter how slight the diagnosis may be, a lubricant can then be supplied to prevent that wear from becoming any worse. Well, before time. Give the people at Main Lube a call. They're waiting to hear from you. Go to mainlube.com.au. Then there is your local Repco store. And the beauty of dealing with Repco is that you receive experience at the front counter as soon as you walk through the door. Whether you're in the trade or as a retail customer as well. In fact, the Repco inventory gives you access to $50 million worth of more parts for more cars. The Repco stores are scattered across Australia and New Zealand. Visit Repco online at repco.com.au and repco.co.nz. And on today's show, I've travelled east of Geelong in Victoria, Australia for the Queenscliff Rod Run 2013. Now this rod run, it's been going for years. So what if you have other stuff to do today? If a rod run is on in town, it's everyone's mission to try and get as much cubic capacity out onto the streets as possible. Open headers, slender fenders, hordes of running boards, different types of pipes. Look up cool in the dictionary and you'll see a picture of the vehicles that turn up to this event. Now predominantly this rod run comprises mainly hot rods of course but other classic makes are welcome as well. Time now to go see what some of these good old boys are up to. <laughs> On today's show, it's a cracker. You'll see Kerry's two-door red coupe and teardrop caravan that is homemade. There's Steve's Ford Tudor sedan and a member of the Geelong Streeters. Esther turns up in her 1928 T-model Roadster. You'll see John and his stunning 56 Chev that'll snap your neck to have a look at. Kevin's 34 Chev is more cool than your fridge and has enough power to pull your house off its stumps and John's 1958 Chev is big, blue and almost needs its own postcode with more shiny stuff than you'd find under a bald man's hat. It's all in the mix and ready to serve on this week's Classic Restos. What an event here. How are you, Kermie? I'm good, mate. Yes, excellent. Lovely day. Yeah. Great crowd. Dude, you got some stuff going on here. Now, tell us about your 30A model, first of all. started in hot rods before it got going in Melbourne in 1955. And I had an A-model Tourer. 1956, I had another A-model Tourer, then a 37 four-door, then a 40-model four-door. 
And that's back in 1958. This is great. I mean, you're going to live to 115, 120 the way you're going. You've got so much stuff going on. I have. Yeah. I've had, yeah, had a hectic life. I've uh, enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. Done a lot of stuff. But listen, I've got to find out about the paint. I've got to ask, uh, this, this, this is knockout. Beautiful paint. What is it? It's, uh, it's House of Colour, which is American paint. It is a, what they call three-pack. It's got a base coat. Like you put your urethanes, your, your uh, high fills, and prepare it yep. so it's really nice and smooth and glowing. Yeah. Then you put your paint on. Yeah. Uh, three, uh, four coats of uh, base coat, four yep. coats of a uh, urethane coat, yep. and yep. then four or five coats of clear. Have a go at the curves on this car. It's just, it's really yeah. gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's. Um, you'd be a bit, you'd be a bit of a chick magnet cruising around in this, wouldn't you, Kermy? Oh, uh, can't say that. And, Depends who's listening, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we go, I could talk for ages just on the car. Tell us about the teardrop van, the little caravan you've built. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Check that out, eh? Right. Um, well, with with the car, it's only got a small boot, so it can only fit small bags in. I thought, if I'm going on rod runs every weekend, you need a bit more room. So I thought I'll build a teardrop, and I designed the whole thing and built the whole thing from yeah. chassis up myself. Coloured television, DVD, CD, clock radio, fridge, cooker. Yeah. Uh, water tanks, got all the pots and pans and crockery and cutlery and everything, so it's all fitted out yep. and uh, quite comfortable. And um, yeah, it took me uh, 10 weeks to build it from start to finish. Awesome stuff, Kermie. I love your work, mate. Thanks for uh, your interview, Fletch. I appreciate it. Best TV show in, in Australia. Uh, he, yeah. had, he had to say that, didn't he? <laughs> Good on you, buddy. All right. Thanks a lot, mate. Moving through, we've got Steve now, member of the Geelong Street Rotters. Mate, you guys have done a fantastic job. How are you, Fletch? Yeah, we do. It uh, takes a fair bit of work to put this on for the weekend. It takes us probably the next 12 months to do it all. Very committed club. Yeah, we do it for the charities. You know, we raise a lot of money for local charities. A lot, a lot of different charities too. Oh, mate, a lot of charities, yeah. I've always said this about car shows. It's great to turn up and see these beautiful cars and talk to the wonderful people. But behind the scenes, a lot of organisation and a lot of people benefit as well, which is a, a real nice touch. Now, Steve, tell us about your tutor. Sitting behind us here, gorgeous machine, mate. What's going on there? Well, um, I've had it about three years. It's from Queensland. Drives well, runs well, looks great. Mate, I love the interior. Uh, I love these tan, these leather interiors against uh, the burgundy paint. Beautiful contrast. Really nice machine. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. It's a cream leather. Uh, looks great with a maroon. Um, it suits it really good. Very comfortable to drive. The wife drives it a fair bit. Takes the girls for cruises and uh, and it's a cruiser and that's my e idea. Engine wise, Steve, what's up front? Well, actually, it's surprised. It's a 308, isn't it? It's, it's tricked up. It's, it's set up. For... Oh, jeez, mate. Oh, hey, no, he's right. he's yeah. let the oval boys down. Uh, no, look, uh, it came with a 308 and I was um and ah, but it's great on fuel. It's got tons of power and it's a cruiser. And I, I stuck with it because it's good for the wife to drive. And uh... Well, look, all I can say is this. If you are into hot rods, and not just hot rods, I mean, that's another good thing about today's event. Everyone's welcome. But if you are into your hot rods, this event is right up there, isn't oh, it? Mate. It certainly is. Well, look at the other cars here, all the classics. You've got old, you've got new, you've got uh, customised, you've got um, special interest cars, Mustangs, Corvettes. Yeah. It's good for everybody. And look at the weather. We turn on again in Geelong. Yeah. Great. Good on you, Steve. It's great, Fletch. Thanks. Fletchy here at a car day. Got to be conscious. Keep the sun off your head. Bit of slip, slop, slap. What about a bit of a gazebo? But there's nothing wrong with the Chinese brands. This is a perler. Once you've erected your gazebo, then you have the job of de-erecting it or unerecting it or even pulling it down. But before you disassemble any gazebo, take safety. Always start by lifting the up this. Mate. Oh. Okay. Now, next step, once you've lifted the cover off the corner, move to the centre. Now, in here, it's the... Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh crap. Oh, neck minute. Oh, piece of sh... A lot of time and effort's gone into this. And it's just... What's the top 
has come off. All you do, it's simple, because all you're doing is really getting the canvas away from the aluminium frame. And that's all oh, you've got to... <laughs> Okay, now once it's disassembled, all you've got to do now is put it back into the bag to take back to your next car show. These are incredible, these gazebos. They're fantastic. Look, it takes a bit of practice, admittedly. At the end of the day, it's the shittiest bloody... You... Oh. you may be thinking to yourselves, where do you go from here? Well, at this point, the canvas has been removed totally from the structure. It's a case now of folding up the canvas and then folding up the aluminium frame. Once the tarp is off the frame, goes into an easy carry bag, this is good quality stuff. As long as you don't put it up against pouring rain and pine needles, it's quite strong. Once erected, you don't need council approval. You can keep it up as long as you like until the council sees it. Then they'll ask you to take it down. They usually give you about 12 hours for that to happen. These easy to carry bags are great. In this case, the zipper's broken, so we won't be able to do that up, but that's okay. We'll just roll it up like that. Put that to one side for the next car show. Seriously though, at the end of the day, it is the way to go to get one of these gazebos. Think about skin cancer, think about protecting yourself. For the next car show, get yourself one of these gazebos and don't be stupid. There you go, all done. All packed and ready to go into your boot for your next car show. Don't forget when it comes time for insurance, as long as it's got a seat and a couple of bloody wheels, it should be insured with the best in the business, Shannon's Insurance. Pick up the phone, give them a call, 134646 for a quote. Time for Esther now on today's show. How are you, Esther? Good, thanks, Fletch. How are you? I'm wonderfully well. Have a look at her rod. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. She's a 2018 18 model roadster with a 350 Chev. Well, there you go. Best of both worlds. Got the, the T model and the Chev up front. What a nice combo. Yes. What's it like to drive? You love it? She's lovely. Yeah. I drive it. My husband doesn't. It's beautiful. I mean, talk about in your face. Yeah, it's magenta pearl. So she's stunning. Does it drive nice? Yes, yeah. very nice. Yeah, don't bounce all over the road in the old girl? No, she doesn't. She drives beautiful. That's great, that's great. So how do you feel, like driving along in a pretty cool hot rod like this? Well, my husband said I look very well in it, so yes. You look very well. <laughs> that's what he said. That's better than looking very bad, isn't it? <laughs> yes. No. All right. Thank you, Esther, for being on today's show. Had to pick on you. Love the hot rod, and uh, thanks for being here today on behalf and um, uh, attributing to such an incredible event here today at Queenscliff. Thank you very much, Fletch. Have right. a good night. Thanks, Esther. Bye. During the production lifespan of the Model A, lasting until August 31st, 1931, Ford produced a staggering 4,320,446 of these. It was replaced shortly after by the Model B. OK, time now to set a cat amongst the pigeons. It's not a hot rod in the sense but with a classic Chev. Beautiful, mate. John, welcome to today's show. Thanks, Fletch. Mate, we've got a 56 Chev here. Yes, correct. Bel Air. Uh, mate, it is putting a cat amongst the pigeons because there's a lot of 55s, a lot of 57s now. Recently on Classic Restos, we had a gorgeous 56 at the Summonats, and I picked on that guy for the same reason, the in-between year, but still a sensational car. Yep. Uh, they're all good models, but uh, me personally, I like the 56. It's just got a bit more character to it, I suppose, yeah. more lines to it and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Now, John, what have you actually done with the car yourself personally? Well, uh, personally, it had no emblems on it, no washers, uh, wiper motor on it, uh, suspension lowered it, changed the wheels, uh, put seat belts in it, carpet. Other than that, it's pretty much as it came over from America. Mate, how cool is it? The colour is gorgeous. Oh, yeah. yeah, a lot of people comment just basically because of the colour. You know, it really stands out. It's yeah. different from the normal turquoise or yeah. reds or blacks. Yeah. So, yeah. Mate, it's got a, a deep metallic uh, highlighted there with the chrome. Just, I mean, all these, all these cars, are, they're in the same category of stunning, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. The chrome work on it's really good. I mean, the blokes uh, who built it put a lot of effort into it. So, yeah, and I loved it. As soon as I saw it, I fell in love with it. Mate, engine-wise, what's happening up front? Uh, it's just a Crate 350 engine, uh, just with a bit of chrome work on it. So I'm not going to touch it. Uh, 
pretty reliable, starts first shot every time. I wouldn't mind $10 for every 350 getting around. Ah, yeah, the good motors, eh? Yeah, I mean, I uh, used to be a 327 man when I was younger, but yeah. uh, now 350s. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. The Chef product is very, very good indeed. Mate, in terms of projects for the future, anything else on the horizon? Uh, the missus wants me to get an EH. Uh, that was my first car. I had an EH and I put a 327 in it when I was a kid. When I was 16, so, and she wants me to do one of them again. So that would have been like a missile. Oh yeah, no, back then it was, yeah, yeah. 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 But nowadays, uh, they got the the quality now is so much better than what we used to do. You know, when it comes to old Holdens, particularly on classic restos, we've had a lot of EHs, and over the years, boy, has that shape grown on me. I think an EH Holden is a, a beautifully styled car. I really do. Well, back when I was younger, it was uh, probably everyone's first car. Uh, everyone had one, uh, a lot of them were six cylinders, there weren't very many V8s around but uh I opted to go to the V8. I was an apprentice mechanic, so it was really good fun fit. Yeah, when, once you've fallen out of the eight tree and you've hit every branch on the way down, mate, there's no turning back. No, that's dead right there. <laughs> All right. John, thanks for your time here today, mate. Thanks no for worries. catching up on Classic Restos here at the Rod Run, Queenscliff 2013. Good on you, buddy. No worries, Fletch. Thanks, buddy. The 1956 Bel Air received a facelift with a more conventional full-width grille. Distinctive two-tone body-side treatments and graceful front and rear wheel openings completed the speed line restyling. Production exceeded 103,000 compared to 128,000 two-door hardtops. The less costly Bel Air at just $2,025 was the only two-door sedan. Seat belts, shoulder harnesses and a padded dashboard were available. It was reported only 7.4% of owners in their survey ordered seat belts. You're watching the Queenscliff Rod Run 2013 put on by the Geelong Street Rodders. Got Kevin now. How are you, buddy? Oh, very well, thanks, Fletch. That's good, mate. You're 34. Wow, what a picture in the paddock here today. Yeah, thanks very much. How long have you had it? Uh, been on the road two years. And uh, tell me what you've done. Uh, a whole lot, actually. Ah, this is good. See, I mean, it's great to buy a car, but when you've done it yourself, that just means so much more, doesn't it? Uh, ask my wife that with the price of it. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> and you're exhausted as well, but hey. It's a good hobby, and a lot of good mates helped me out, so along the way, it's a you know, good experience. Kevin, where did you start? Like, uh, what condition was it like when you first got it? Uh, purchased a 1934 Phaeton, which is the original chassis. Then I bought a Fibrochev body, and put all the bits and pieces to it and custom made everything as you do because it's a Chev, not a Ford. Yeah. <laughs> and away we went. Engine wise up front, Kevin, you haven't mucked around there, mate. No, she's a little bit uh, radical at times, uh, but all fun. <laughs> okay, tell us about the specs of the engine anyway. Oh, it's actually only a 350 crate, but got a roller cam, roller rockers, aluminium heads, a William blower, twin demons, so she gets up in boogies. Quite drivable. Very drivable. Yeah. It's got a nine inch rear in and behind a three speed, so. Mate, the interior as well, absolutely beautiful. I mean, what a stunning car. I mean, we're talking five star here. Uh, the, the interior, just gorgeous. I mean, everywhere I look on this car, it's had some effort put in. And um, it's when it turns up at an event such as this that it really stands out. Who would have ever thought years ago that these 30 shapes would just mean so much in the 2000s? Well, exactly. Who would? Uh, but. I know, it's fun. The 1934 Chevrolet series came equipped with a six cylinder engine that displaced 206 cubic inches and produced 80 horsepower. It was a very versatile and popular vehicle with a variety of body styles to select from. It was available as a four door sedan, two door town sedan, sport sedan, cabriolet, sport coupe, business coupe, roadster, and coach. The four-door sedan was the most popular, with a total of 163, 948 examples sold at a price of $580. When it comes to sophistication, something long and low, have a go at this, this Chevy. Welcome to today's show, John. Okay, Fletch, how are you? Good, mate. Good. How are you? Oh, I'm excellent, mate. Excellent. You'd have to be, mate. Rocking up to an event like this in this Chevy, have a go at this. I mean, whew, mate, what have you done here? Yeah, well, it's uh, six years in the making, mate. It's been on the road five years next week. Yeah, um, yeah 58 Bel Air. Uh, I decided that when I had it, well, actually bought it, it was 
I had these ideas in my head, mate, and I thought, oh, I've got to do something different yeah. with this. And so when you got the car, before you restored it, you, you had the visions of how you wanted the end product to look? Yeah, I had those all in my head, and yeah. I thought, I think I, airbagging was just getting popular, and I, I had the airbag in my head, yeah. and then I thought, well, I reckon I've got to go a bit further and chop this thing, and a few people said, oh, I don't know, you're a pretty hard car to do, and I was persistent, and I think it paid off at the end. But I can't believe the, the, the lines on this car, just the, the sheer styling of it. I mean, um, these Chevy products really must have been an incredible thing back in their day. To think we can go 50-odd years down the track, restore them, new paint, suspensions, interiors, have a look at them. Yeah, well, um, they, they were known as the ugly duckling in their day, especially in Australia, but I don't see anything ugly about them. Well, Chevrolet base model, weren't they? They were, they were. The first coil, yeah. rear suspension, no leaf, and yeah. uh, very comfortable to ride. Even when they were, I had a Biscayne, a four-door Biscayne prior to this, and that was a very comfortable car. But John in the grunt department under the hood, what's happening there? Uh, 400, small block, um, dart heads, yeah. just, yeah, good mild cam but yeah. goes good it'd be no 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 slouch though no no put the foot down she goes 700 turbo in it yeah. the overdrive yeah. i thought yeah. if i'm going to do it i'm going to give it a good cruise sits yeah. on about 2000 rpm at about 110 yeah. great hey, cruiser best of both worlds nice off the line low revving on the freeway at speed yeah. good Excellent. good way to go yeah love it it's yeah. fantastic good on you john well thanks for your time out today mate look just before you do go uh thoughts on uh, queen's cliff for 2013 yeah great great day um i've been coming probably the last five six years in a row um it's just a great day it's a great weekend actually absolutely well i mean i've got to thank greg morrissey uh, and obviously his his team to you know put this event together yeah. uh first time for classic restos here as well for queen's cliff and i'm proud to be able to say that because uh gee there are just so many big events it's just hard to keep up with them yeah. there's plenty especially this time of year. is one a week every week for the next couple of months yeah. so yeah it's all, all right. good enjoy your chevy john and great to catch up buddy thanks fletch great thank you we always look for someone to blame greg morrissey organizer chairman how are you buddy very well fletch thanks for coming down that's okay i've got to take my hat off to you the uh, the geelong street riders have done it again mate queenscliff first time for classic rest days mate what an awesome event congratulations thank you very much that's good to hear you say that mate. yeah no we've been more than happy today we've had um our biggest number of entries for the weekend bumper crowd today the weather was kind to us everything just sort of fell into place yeah, I think it was good. Well, there's a lot of uh, shows of a world standard that I get to attend these days. And when I turned up here today, uh, you're not very far short. The uh, quality of cars, the number of cars, the venue that you've chosen, everything was in your favour. And yep. it was just a just a fantastic show, mate. Oh, good. I appreciate you saying that, mate. Yeah, world class. It's nice to hear something yeah. like that. But, yeah, you have been around, so I suppose you've seen them here yeah. and there. Um, yeah, no. Oh, I had to. I had to say that. Now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, look. Speaking of which, you, you want to get invited back, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> now, look. If you want to be a member of the club, now you must have a website. People watching the show, yep. Geelong Street Rodders. What's the go there? Yep. Um, we've actually got our new website just being built at the moment, and that'll be www.geelongstreetrodders.com.au. Currently, it's .com, but yeah, we're adding in the AU, so that'll be up and running in the next month or so. So yeah, that'll be worth having a look at, and that'll go through all the bits and pieces about what goes on with the club. Look what you've created though, I mean, and, and big companies are involved too, of course. Uh, Nick's here with the Shannon Super Rig. Yep. Uh, I mean, you know, Nick and the Shannon Super Rig, he's like salt. <laughs> he, he, he's in everything. <laughs> Fair call. No, we do. We're very fortunate, mate, with um, some of our sponsors. Like you say, Shannon's been a big name and there's oodles of them. Um, yeah, we are very fortunate. A lot of our club guys are sponsors. We've got a big number of guys in our club and a lot of them are generous enough to sponsor and everything. So, yeah, we are very fortunate in that sense. Good on you, Greg. Well, mate, thank you very much for your time and uh, inviting Fletch here, having Classic Restos here for the first time, mate. And uh, what can I say? Well done. No, good on you, mate. And thanks for coming down and we'd like to see you again. Good on you. My pleasure. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, matey. Well, what do you think of that? Just a little of the Queenscliff Rod Run for 2013 put on by the Geelong Street Rodders. Classic Restos, not possible without the continued support. Oh, of Shannon's Insurance, Main Lube Lubricants and Repco stores around Australia and New Zealand. Now, classicrestos.com.au, that's the website that you need for DVD box sets, Classic Restos t-shirts, finding out information about travelling Route 66 and also my major sponsors and how they can help you. Go to classicrestos.com.au for more information. Now, as I say at the end of every show, no matter where you're watching from, until next week, please, ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like Classic Restos on Facebook.
facebook.com forward slash classic restos tv and episodes can be seen at shannons.com.au well there goes another classic restos thanks for riding along with me for dvd sets and to contact the major sponsors go to classicrestos.com.au Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, main lube lubricants and your local Repco store.